1500 News presents Lieberman Live. The headlines, the experts, the Whack Pack. Now, here's your host, John Lieberman. And we have a very big show today. I am John Lieberman, and we are a news show like none other. And we are certainly so glad that you're here. Our big, big story coming up in two minutes. Convicted sex offender Eric Hartwell cut off his ankle bracelet and went on the run. Can sex offenders be rehabilitated? We will debate it. Our expert guest, Derek Von Lucien, his brother murdered by a sex offender. He now runs the group Ryan United to help families impacted by crime. Our Whack Pack panel, Eric the Actor and Bobo. And first, just as we do each and every day, we will whip it around with the headlines. Lieberman Live. <laughs> Rapid Fire. A win for gay couples in Texas. A federal judge has struck down Texas's ban on gay marriage, but it will be left in place for now, pending an appeals court ruling. Eric, the actor, more and more states seem to be overturning these bans on gay marriage. Do you think that trend will continue? Yeah, I think it will continue. You know, it seems to be getting more and more acceptable nowadays for gay marriage and also just being gay in general. There's a lot of people coming out, you know, athletes, actors. As I mentioned at the top of the broadcast, convicted sex offender predator Eric Hartwell is still on the loose. He escaped from a Colorado halfway house and cut his ankle bracelet off. Bobo, what will it take to capture this guy? Well, they're going to have to put out all bullets in law enforcement. It's going to have to really uh, find his, you know, try to find his whereabouts by finding, you know, uh, past uh, occurrences and places that he might have been at and uh, put a major man hat on him. They'll get this guy. A Missouri inmate has been executed. Michael Taylor abducted, raped, and killed a Kansas City teen as she waited for the school bus in 1989. Missouri has now executed its fourth inmate in as many months. Politico calls Missouri, quote, ground zero for the death penalty. Bobo, why is Missouri bucking the nationwide trend of outlawing the death penalty? Um, outlawing the d death penalty, uh, uh... I mean, nobody, I don't know. I mean, they don't want the death penalty, right? Former New England Patriots star Aaron Hernandez fought another inmate in the jail where he's being held, awaiting trial of murder and weapons charges. Eric, the actor, no one was seriously injured, but why can't Hernandez just lay low? I would think that he would want to and uh, just keep from getting attacked by someone that hey, may not be a Patriots fan. He's only on a 10-day contract, but Jason Collins' Brooklyn Nets jersey was the NBA's top-selling jersey on Tuesday, its first day on the market. Eric, what does that say about our society? Well, like I said before during the thing about gay marriage, it's, as I can tell, getting more and more acceptable to be out. More Americans plan to spend their tax refunds this year than save or invest that money. That's according to a new Edward Jones poll. Bobo, what does that say about our economy? Well, maybe the economy is coming around now. You know, people are spending more, and uh, I, I guess that's a good thing. Now to our spotlight issue of the day. Lieberman Live, the big, big story. Sex offenders, how many don't register even though they're supposed to? How many reoffend? Can they be rehabilitated? We sent High Pitch Eric out to the streets to see what you're saying about it. Lieberman Live, Chief Correspondent, High Pitch Eric. Do you believe sex offenders can be rehabilitated? No, I don't. I believe that somebody that commits a sex crime, like molestation uh, or child abduction or anything like that, I honestly don't believe that they can be rehabilitated. I think there's something wrong in the wiring of their brain, and I think it would save us a lot of money if we just executed them. Do you believe that sex offenders should be rehabilitated? Of course. The, well, I think uh, rehabilitation is good. Uh, it's better than keeping people in jail for years. But there are those people who just cannot be rehabilitated, and they should be uh, castrated. 
Now to our featured guest. Lieberman Live, the experts. This is a very special guest, and he is some guy. Derek Von Lucien's brother, Ryan, was eight years old back in 1987 when he, when he was kidnapped, raped, and murdered by a repeat sex offender, a pedophile. Derek now runs Ryan United to help families of crime victims. First of all, Derek, you know, we mentioned at the top of the broadcast this sex offender out of Colorado who's on the loose. How much of a danger is that guy? Well, thanks for having me on, John. It's it's great to be on. He He's a big danger. I mean, this guy, obviously, you look at his history, you look at some of the crimes that he's committed, and he's escaping for one reason, and that's to commit more crimes. And so this guy uh, needs to be found, and our U.S. Marshal Service is on it, and they're, you know, they're conducting a manhunt as we speak for this man. Derek, I want to talk about recidivism, obviously, sex offenders reoffending. There are conflicting studies out there, but one from 20 2012 that I found from Lynn University in Florida says the following, and then I want to get your thoughts on it. After five years, 5.2% of sex offenders are rearrested for a sex crime. After 10 years, 13.7% are rearrested for a sex crime. But when you loop in all crimes, those numbers jump to 37% and 60% respectively. Your thoughts? Well, um, and, and those those statistics are are, are absolutely right. Um, what what the misconception is that is that most sex offenders go back to prison for another sex crime, when in fact most sex offenders go back to prison for a, a, a general reoffense, such as not following their conditions or anything like that. It's important to know that there's different types of sex offenders. When it comes to those types of offenders who uh, molest boys, over half of those types of offenders uh, recommit another sex offense. Um, so those are really the types of offenders that we need to pay attention to and we need to focus our, our efforts into making sure that we don't let them out into communities unmonitored. Well, let me ask you this. Same study says 39% of sex offenders failed to register sometime during that 10-year time period. That's what really concerns me. They're supposed to be tracked. They're supposed to be monitored. And the bottom line is they're not registering. Absolutely, and, and what that does is it's a, it's a, we have our sex offender registry, but really if, if they're not on there, it's called kind of a false sense of security for the public. So what local law enforcement and sometimes corrections is charged to do is they're out there trying to find these offenders that are not registered and, and, and to get them registered. And with that, as you know, John, comes lack of manpower and, and lack of money to be able to pay for people to go out and find these folks so we we have these offenders slipping through the cracks absolutely i want to talk about rehabilitation and to do that i'm going to open it up to the group lieberman live the panel eric the actor i want to start with you you know research shows that treatment of sex offenders does make a difference those that receive treatment while they're in jail are less likely to reoffend offenders who don't get treatment are basically likely to reoffend at a rate of 17 percent compared to 10 percent for offenders who have received treatment what can we do in our jails to help treat sex offenders eric oh, i really don't know if there's anything that can be done i mean the sex of and they're, I think no matter what is not someone that should be roaming around society. Bobo, can sex offenders be rehabilitated? No. Bottom line, John, you got to put them on an island like Plum Island and uh, separate it from everybody else around And because these folks uh, can never, ever be rehabilitated. Yeah, the programs might help them to a point, but they're going to go right back, like the officer said, Derek said, and they're going to commit these crimes again. Derek, Wisconsin is one of 21 states with laws that allow for the civil commitment of sex offenders after they have completed their sentences. I'm curious to get your thoughts on that. I think uh, civil commitment is one of our best tools that we have out there, and not every state has civil commitment because here's the scenario. 
uh, an offender commits a, a horrible crime against a child, they're they're put into prison, um, they're not paroled, or, or act, eventually they're paroled, their sentence expires. And we have a lot of offenders that are in that gray area where um, they're out, and they're out of prison, they've served their time, their time has expired, uh, and they're out in our communities, and they're not being supervised by probation and parole because they're no longer under conditions. So what some states have done is recognize that gray area and said, listen, after their sentence is done and expired, we're going to civilly commit that individual so we can continue to monitor that offender. Eric, the actor, there are around 800,000 registered sex offenders in the United States. And I say around because I just mentioned that many of them don't register. Many of them thumb their nose at it. So you could probably put that number closer to a million. Does that statistic, Eric, surprise you, scare you, enlighten you? Well, it's kind of an awful thing to think about that there's that many people walking around that have committed sex crimes against people. I mean, too bad there is not some island, deserted island big enough to stick all these people onto. Bobo, should prison be for rehabilitation or should it be for punishment, to use it in a punitive way, for sex offenders? Okay, A, yes, you have to send them to prison for that, uh, for what they, the crimes they committed. And B, they need extensive and long going. You do not let them out. You put them at a place where they're, like they said, strongly supervised 24-7. You do not put them in the communities like near me. It's, it, it's outrage. I, I go on the computer and there's all these red dots where they are and they're right near schools. Answer that question. Why are they putting these offenders near schools? It's ridiculous. Derek, I want to ask you this. Obviously, your brother, uh, Ryan, he was eight when he was, you know, brutally raped and murdered back in 1987. How do you counsel families now to deal with this issue of sex offenders in our community? Because there is that balancing act of, you know, being a vigilante and, and also, you know, looking out for your community and protecting your family. Right. What we do through our community program, John, is, is really talk about facts and myths regarding sex offenders, similar to what we're doing right here, talking to people, educating people about what they are, what they aren't. And then secondly, creating that vigilance within people, really to have people be aware of their surroundings. Check the sex offender registry. Now we have a national sex offender registry that you can go on and check any state. But but check around you. Be aware of who's around you and who they are, what they look like. Check the pictures out and then you know have those conversations with your family about being vigilant and about being aware of your surroundings and if something doesn't look right it probably isn't and tell your kids tell your neighbors that hey be sure to say something if something doesn't look right eric the actor have you checked out the sex offender registry uh, for your area no actually i have not bobo have you checked out the sex offender registry for your area absolutely john i got a seven-year-old i'm i'm with him 24 7 i want to know who's around my area and i live in a nice community but everywhere you are they're around you can't get away from it and it's very scary like i said when they put them near schools uh, on their parks you you gotta worry about that i mean they're, they're, they're like ghouls they're all over the place well derek the reality is there's really no rhyme or reason you know to where registered sex offenders uh, offend and then decide to live you look at the states with the highest rate, Delaware, Oregon, Vermont, the states with the lowest rate, Pennsylvania, Maryland, New Mexico. So it doesn't really break down by any sort of geographic barriers. No, and, and really it's hard to put offenders in, into a box and say, you know, this type of offender is going to reoffend and, and this type isn't. You know, it's it's really something that is, is hard to grasp. Um, and when we talk about residency restrictions of where we're going to allow offenders to live, there's nothing really tied into the offender lived by a school so he reoffended. Uh, there, there's no no numbers on that right now that that we have to to correlate, you know, where they live and and committing another offense. I want to thank my terrific panel today. And before I let the panel go, Eric, I want to mention that Eric the Actor's blog is up on howardstern.com slash Lieberman Live. Soon we will have Bobo's blog up on defensive driving at 
HowardStern.com slash Lieberman Live. Five seconds, Boba. Why should someone read your blog? Uh, if you want any good defensive driving tips, I've been in the business over 30 years. I know what I'm talking about, and I can help save your life. Go read it. Five seconds, Eric. Why should someone read your blog if they didn't hear you this morning on Howard? Well, it, what it, the blog does is it kind of debunks the bullshit premonition that people have about me. And Derek Von Lucian, you are doing God's work, and, and all our thoughts and, and well wishes are with you. And thank you so much for your time. Derek runs the group Ryan United to help families of crime victims. Libra Maniac. <laughs> In tonight's Lieber Maniac segment, he did wrong, then he did right, but he should have never done wrong. He is State Representative Sam Moore, a Republican in Georgia. Initially, he introduced House Bill 1033 in that state, which proposed reforming loitering laws and loosening restrictions on sex offenders going near places where children congregate. Yes, the bill, had it been passed and signed into law, would have endorsed sex offenders being close to children. From the lawmaker himself, quote, I am okay with that. The reason I'm okay with that is the assumption is they have done their time. If they're still a danger to society, they should not be free. Am I saying it's not creepy? It's definitely creepy. Well, after a huge, huge uproar, State Rep Moore bowed to reality and withdrew the bill. But the fact he even introduced it makes Georgia State Representative Sam Moore today's Lieber maniac. On the next Lieberman Live, AIDS in America, why isn't anyone talking about it much anymore? We will debate it with an expert doctor and our WAC Pack panel of Medicated Pete and Marianne from Brooklyn. You can follow me on Twitter, at Reporter John, at Reporter J-O-N, and if you're so inclined, my new true crime book is out. You can check it out at whiteyontrial.com. For now, stay safe. Good night. Thank you for listening. We'll see you tomorrow.